The lactarius mushrooms of North America are some of my favorite mushrooms, and there's just something about the characteristic milky latex reaction they exhibit that I think is so compelling, and it's particularly exciting to me to find a species of lactarius that I still haven't found yet on my foraging trips. But they can be a bit difficult to identify, and there are several closely related species of lactarius mushrooms that can trip you up. Right? Take, for example, the Hygrophorus milky, otherwise known as Lactifluus hygrophoroides, and the closely related Lactarius volemis. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but that's how I pronounce it. Now, both of these mushrooms are similar in appearance. They both stain an olive yellowish color on the surface of the cap when exposed to potassium hydroxide. They both exhibit similar latex reactions when the gills are disturbed. Both are edible, but there are several key distinctions between the two that will allow you to identify them. And in this video, we're gonna explore those differences. Now, I'm gonna show you a specimen of both of these species of mushrooms, and I found both of these mushrooms in association with oak trees, and both were found on the 11th of July, 2021, in the American Northeast. Now, I'm gonna first start off by showing you examples of the individual mushrooms each, and then we're gonna do a direct comparison side by side of both of these individual species. So first we're gonna examine the Hygrophorus milky. And I'm gonna show you several specimens I've encountered. Now as with many mushroom species, the morphology and appearance of the mushroom fruiting body can change with age. And given this, I wanna show you a few instances of this mushroom. It should also be noted that the term Lactifluus hygrophoroides is interchangeable with Hygrophorus milky, so I may use these terms synonymously without realizing it. Now, I wanted to show you a relatively mature specimen of uh, Lactifluus hygrophoroides uh, that has been partially chewed on by some sort of animals, maybe a squirrel or something, revealing a section of the gills that would have been occluded normally by the mushroom cap. I show you this because it's a rare opportunity to see the spacing in the gills in an unusual way that you don't normally see. Now notice that there are several millimeters at least uh, between the gills, and this is absolutely characteristic of the Hygrophorus milky. And notice the orange, almost salmon-colored appearance of the cap, and how on the mature mushroom uh, on the right-hand side, the middle of the cap is starting to become concave, while the specimen on the far left is convex. And this is, again, something that's typical of younger specimens of Hygrophorus milky. And also here is yet another younger specimen that I dissected. You see it's much more traditionally mushroom or toadstool shaped when they're younger, but then they start to get that concave shape in older age. Now next, I wanna show you some of, some of the examples of the Hygrophorus milky's latex reaction whenever the gills are disturbed. So let's watch a few clips of that. The bruising of the gills becomes more pronounced and let's do that again. You can see it right there. Take that home and do a spore print and see what we get. So I'm going to show you the latex reaction on the Hygrophorus milky. I'm going to cut into it right now. Hopefully you guys will be able to see that. Okay, let me uh, turn down the aperture. Uh, it's no use, it's still kind of hard to see. But yeah, you can kind of see it there. Now I find that the latex reaction in the Hygrophorus milky is much more subdued in comparison to Lactarius volumus, taking much more time to pool in between the spaces of the gills. And I don't know if this is a function of the fact that the gills are more spaced out, and thus there are less gills to house the latex, and thus less latex, or if the mushroom just genetically, for whatever reason, uh, produces less of this latex overall. But another key characteristic of Hygrophorus milky is that when the gills are bruised and the latex reaction is precipitated, the latex does not change the color of the gills over time. So they stay the same color. Now, 
Again, oftentimes different species of mushrooms can be differentiated by their reaction to uh, various chemical substances, the most popular of which is a potassium hydroxide solution being applied to various parts of the mushroom. You can also use uh, ammonia and, and sulfate salts as well, or iron salts, I'm sorry. So both Hygrophorus milky and Lactarius velemus exhibit a yellowish to olive color on the cap in the presence of potassium hydroxide, but I find that Hygrophorus milky's olive tone tends to be much closer to a darker olive tone, and Lactarius velemus uh, tends to be much closer to a yellow shade of olive. And here are several instances of the potassium hydroxide reaction exhibited by the Hygrophorus milky. Okay guys, we found another example of Hygrophorus milky, and I wanted to show you, again, I'm just gonna continuously show you the different examples of potassium hydroxide. I'm gonna try it, not to get it on our little friend here, the little slug was enjoying this little meal. And I'm gonna just dabble it on the most orange part here, and you're gonna see that that olive color almost immediately occur. Let me like get this away from our little friend because I feel like he's going to eat that and it's not good for him to be eating potassium hydroxide. Sorry buddy, I deprived you of a bit of a meal, but I'd like to think that it's in the pursuit of science. So yeah, you can immediately see that color change and it's very, very noticeable. Before you had that vivid orange color, now it's just basically tan olive. All right, let's go back here. We're gonna shake the potassium hydroxide off and then kind of show you right there. No real color change. And we're going to do again the cap. Let's uh, change the aperture settings and get kind of a brighter color. And here goes our slug friend again. That kind of covered the entire cap. So now we're going to begin to examine the other mushroom in question, the Lactarius velemus. And first and foremost, when witnessing the underside of the cap and the latex reaction in this species, I want you to pay attention to three characteristics. First, observe the much, much closer spacing of the gills in comparison to Lactifluus hygrophoroides, and the, in my opinion, much more robust production of latex when the gills are disturbed. Also, notice the brown staining on the gills. This is a direct result of the latex coming into contact with the gills, and this does not happen on Lactifluus hygrophoroides, only on Lact Lactarius velamus. So now, given all of this information, in a second we're going to compare the two side by side, and then I'm going to show you the differences in stain in reaction to potassium hydroxide. However, before I do that, it should be noted that one of the key characteristics that distinguishes Lactarius velemus from Lact Lactifluus hygrophoroides is simply the smell. Lactifluus hygrophoroides has a typical earthy mushroom smell, nothing that really smells out of the ordinary in my opinion, it's kind of a generic mushroom uh, smell, but Lactarius velemus has the distinct smell of rotting fish. And this is an unmistakable characteristic of this mushroom. So now, I want to compare these two mushrooms side by side in all of the ways we've previously analyzed them, just to show you, give you a better understanding of how they differ here, visually. So first we're going to start with the undersides of both of the caps. So notice again the spacing of the gills between the two mushrooms with Lactarius velemus being much, much closer than the gill spacing compared to Lactifluus hygrophoroides, and it's really quite striking and apparent when you see them side by side here. Also, observe the latex reactions on either side.
and notice the differences in the staining of the cap when exposed to potassium hydroxide. And also, it should be noted that Lactarius volumus's gills stain an orange color as well in the presence of potassium hydroxide. So not just the cap, but the gills themselves also turn an orange color in the presence of potassium hydroxide where Lactifluus hygrophoroides does not exhibit that color change on the gills. And finally, the spore prints of these two mushrooms are both white. So unfortunately, you won't be able to use uh, the spore prints to differentiate these two species. So to recap, uh, when you encounter either of these mushrooms, check for gill spacing, latex reaction with bruised gills, potassium hydroxide reaction on the cap and the gills, and even the stalk if you want to, or the stipe. And finally, a smell test. And given that information, you should be well on your way to being able to regularly differentiate these two species. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to subscribe. Keep tuning in for more fungi content.